Sometimes you just want in the beta that badly. Whatever the demo, the early build, the tease, you're willing to buy a whole other game to play it. Developers learned long ago that an easy way to lure folks to an unusual game is by packing a little bite of a much bigger game in alongside it. Here's the thing, though. Sometimes the games end up satisfying even though you just showed up for the early access. That was the case with these. Final Fantasy Type-0 HD with the Final Fantasy XV episode Duske demo. Type-0 was always going to be a tough sell to die-hard Final Fantasy fans. A weird spin-off featuring an enormous cast of freaky high school student soldiers built for PSP would give pause to even the most hardcore fans. When it skipped release in the US in 2011, a small core of players demanded it get localized, and Square acquiesced with an HD remake in early 2015. What drew people into the unusual game, though, was an early playable look at director Hajime Tabata's next big project, Final Fantasy XV. The episode Duske demo of XV gave players a chance to control Noctis and his band of bros in a brief adventure for the first time since the game went into production nearly ten years earlier. It was cool, surely, but Type-0 ended up being more of a meal thanks to its demanding combat, fascinating war documentary story, and its bananas ending. Hero Brave Fencer Musashi! Brave Fencer Musashi with the Final Fantasy VIII demo. Square's history of bundling marquee demos alongside niche games truly began on the PlayStation, and Brave Fencer Musashi is a highlight. The Final Fantasy VIII demo included alongside it, coming hot off of the popularity of Final Fantasy VII, was a powerful draw, letting you control Squall and friends as they invade a neighboring country. Brave Fencer Musashi, though, turned out to be totally rad! A comedic spin on The Legend of Zelda, it followed the titular samurai as he finds himself in a strange fantasy world full of magical, talking swords, food puns, and more. It's rough around the edges, but still funny and fun as hell. It's all gone to shit, and it just keeps rising. Crackdown with the Halo 3 beta. Multiplayer betas have largely replaced traditional vertical slice demos as a method to draw in new players, and the granddaddy beta that kicked off the trend was none other than Halo 3 on Xbox 360. One of the only ways to get into the Halo 3 beta back in 2007 was to pick up a copy of Open World Pulp Fest Crackdown three full months before the beta started. It wasn't easy to play the Halo 3 beta, though, when it finally started because it was so damn hard to stop playing Crackdown. Right from the start, Crackdown is a crazy playground, filled with gangs to overthrow, stuff to blow up, and buildings to leap over. Not only was it a sprawling open-world game, but you also have superhero powers, and you only get more powerful as you play. Anyone who's heard the low hum of a hidden ability orb knows the alluring pull of Crackdown. A tiny taste of Halo 3's multiplayer couldn't compare. <laughs> Bulletstorm with the Gears of War 3 beta. While Epic Games was working on Gears of War 3 for Microsoft, they were also collaborating with People Can Fly on a strange new shooter called Bulletstorm. A generically named comedy shooter with some kind of whip thing in the trailers isn't a natural hook to fans of the Stony Dower Gears series. So, packing in an early dip into the chainsaw-filled waters of Gears 3 was a strong hook for Bulletstorm on Xbox 360. But where Gears of War 3 proved to be a familiarly somber slice of game violence, Bulletstorm revealed itself to be Tony Hawk's pro skater with guns, a spectacular ballet of ridiculous carnage. Moving through each stage is like running through the world's most complex and creative shooting gallery, only this time the animatronic ducks shoot back. Unfortunately, even the inclusion of the Gears of War 3 beta didn't improve Bulletstorm's sales. There are few games like it. Shut up. 
Dino Crisis with the Resident Evil 3 Nemesis demo. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. By the time Resident Evil 3 Nemesis came out in 1999, Capcom's horror series was one of the biggest names in the gaming world. But it was also high time to start branching out into new survival horror waters to secure its monopoly on the genre. Dino Crisis should have been able to sell itself. It's basically Resident Evil. Tank controls, hack voice acting, and even those damn key puzzles. But it's Resident Evil with freaking dinosaurs. Ridiculous? Certainly. Awesome? Most definitely. And while it likely would have been fine on its own, Capcom did throw in a demo of Nemesis to seal the deal. It followed Jill Valentine as she tried to escape Raccoon City and persistent zombie Hulk Nemesis. It definitely, however, did not have dinosaurs. Infamous with the Uncharted 2 multiplayer beta. Uncharted getting multiplayer was big news back in 2009. Naughty Dog's series was already one of the few exclusives luring people to PS3 after its rocky early years. The only way to get an early hands-on with the action was to pick up a copy of Sucker Punch's Infamous, an open-world superhero game that traded in that developer's cartoon raccoon dude for a bike messenger with electricity powers. While Uncharted's multiplayer turned out to not be as spectacular as the campaign in Uncharted 2 that year, Infamous turned out to be a solid comic book-inspired adventure that spawned an increasingly impressive series. Lame lead characters or not. Wolfenstein The New Order with the Doom 4 beta. Doom 4's release date comes almost exactly two years after the release date of Wolfenstein The New Order in May of 2014. The debut of Machine Games, a studio with history and respected games like The Darkness and Chronicles of Riddick, but no real following, New Order wasn't exactly a huge draw before its release, but it did promise access to a beta of the new Doom. For a year and a half after the New Order hit, though, that Doom beta never materialized. Anyone who bought the game, though, didn't care, as Wolfenstein The New Order turned out to be one of the best single-player shooters in years injecting a strong dose of humanity into all of its violence. It dove deep into the evils people commit against each other, but also the bonds that form during trying times. And it's one hell of a shooter. I hate to make compliments, but I might have underestimated the usefulness of your ape-like physique, Mr. Blaskovich. Good morning. Ready for combat operation. Zone of the Enders with the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo. Metal Gear Solid 2's demo was possibly the most anticipated demo of all time, arriving two years after the monumental success of the first Metal Gear Solid and a practically riot-inducing E3 trailer. The demo also turned out to be, all on its own, one of the very best Metal Gear games ever made. It featured pretty much everything in the full game's tanker opening chapter, up to and including the fight against Olga Gerlokovich. It was dense, filled with secrets, and easter eggs galore. Zone of the Enders, the actual game it came with the demo, is nowhere near as fondly remembered or as infamous as the demo itself, but it remains a brilliant mecha melodrama filled with fast-paced battles and heady themes. It's a bit pretentious and filled with overly long cutscenes, but its killer sci-fi action makes it a highlight in creator Hideo Kojima's game on. Did I win? I have confirmed that the target has ceased all functions. You are correct. You did win. If you dig this list and want more like it, follow GamesRadar on youtube.com slash GamesRadar.